सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर्यम करवाबहै तेजस्विनावधीतमस्तुमा विद्विषावहै ॐ शांति 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 ॐ नमो नारायणाय ॐ नमो नारायणाय ॐ नमो नारायणाय ॐ नमो नारायणाय ॐ नमो Om Namo Narayanaya Om Namo Narayanaya Om Namo Narayanaya Om Namo Narayanaya Sada शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः समस्त जनकल्याण निरत करुणामय नमामि चिन्मय देव सद्गुर ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गुरु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओं नमो भगवते वैवस्वताय मृत्यवे ब्रह्म विद्याचार्याय नचिकेत सेच यस सो नाउ द लास्ट टू टर्म्स आर लेफ्ट एस आई सेड इट डिस्क्राइब्स दिस स्वरूप द नेचर ऑफ दैट थिंग स्वरूप लक्षणम रुतम एंड बृहत सो व्हाट इज रुतम रुतम मीन सत्यम This term has come earlier also. Rutam, sarvatmana pisan. Rutam, avita tha swabhava eva. That which remains as it is. Avita tha swabhava. Ta tha means what? As it is. Vita tha means what? Not as it is. Avita tha means what? <laughs> You see, 
avidatha swabhav that we just doesn't change that is called as truth the whole world is there and every change is happening oh something must have happened to that lord when he created the world did the lord transform to become the world that is called as parinama vada this is one among the philosophies one philosophy is god has transformed himself and became the world just milk becoming curd so we say no that cannot be accepted the vedanta philosophy is vivarta vada without changing he has become everything how is it possible so we say just like just like the rope has become the snake i am seeing the snake there but did the rope become the snake no it's just your imagination it is just a projection of the mind actually god is avita tha he has never changed but my mind projects something and now i am seeing the world so trikaleshu tri avasthasu yat tishthati tat sat in all the three periods of time past present and future in all the three states waking dream and deep sleep that which remains without changing that is called as sat truth abadhyatvam satyatvam that which cannot be negated that which cannot be denied that is called as truth you may ignore it but you can't deny it consciousness is that rudam it is always there you may pay attention you may not pay attention it's left up to you but it is there rudam and the next term is brahat what is brahat mahan sarva karanatvat great mahan means great superior most the ultimate so in spirituality also there is a description of what is superior so what are the different descriptions anything which is the cause is superior to the effect cause is always superior parents are superior children are inferior so therefore children must bow down to the parents why parents are the cause children are the effect this truth is the ultimate cause from which everything has come so it is worshipful the real is superior the illusion projected upon the real is inferior that way also is god is great everything is a projection upon him he is the substratum the base so the screen is superior the movie projected upon the screen is inferior there is a gradation upon the screen of consciousness the movie world is projected whatever we are seeing is just a projection so that substratum is superior brahat outer is always inferior the inner is always superior because inner controls the outer what is outer sense object one step inside sense organs so sense organs are superior to sense object sense organs are controlled by the mind so every time you see you are going inside the mind is controlling the sense organs so therefore sense organs are i mean the mind is superior to the sense organs but the mind is controlled by the intellect so therefore intellect is superior to the mind but the intellect belongs to somebody the ego okay so the ego is one step inside ego is superior because he is the one who is controlling 
but the ego exists in consciousness the self ego by itself is nothing but a shadow the real i that is a inner inner most pratyak this is a term used pratyak inner so inner because it controls the outer inner is always superior to the outer so anyone who is paying attention to the inner what happens to that person <laughs> that is the thing and anyone who is stuck in the outer <laughs> you see when i am getting addicted to mobile phones and this and that what am i doing you will find that his life becomes a mess a person who is addicted to anything outer his life becomes a mess why because he is weak when we become a slave to the outer we lose the inner when we pay attention to the inner we become a master of the outer when you become a master of the outer you become a master of your life correct yes that is why holding on to god is the best thing you can do in life that everything comes under your control your mind your senses your intellect everything comes under your control because you are you have a hold upon the highest isn't it when you have the hold upon the honor of the company everybody will salute you isn't it the peon the the officers everybody why because you have hold why yes influence you know? when you have influence on the highest the innermost the self so paying attention means what becoming friendly with somebody who is the superior most the lord the one who becomes a slave of the lord becomes a master of the world master of the senses banu one who becomes a slave of the world <laughs> becomes a slave of everyone brahat so the inner is superior the outer is inferior and the lord is the innermost self so therefore he is the superior most again the subtle is superior the gross is inferior sukshma is always superior because sukshma controls the sthula the subtle controls the gross the subtle thoughts controls the gross speech gross action and they are all connected huh? that which is subtle will be inner <laughs> that which is subtle will be the cause action is the effect thoughts are the cause so they are all connected and the subtle most is consciousness so therefore it is worshipful right that which is supported is inferior that which is supporter is superior god is the ultimate support so because of all these reasons that lord is mahan brahat worshipful reverential that is why is called as para prakriti para superior apara is inferior okay so therefore what is the message the message is there is an entity in you which is worshipful which is a cause of this world the whole world is existing in him and that lord is right there in your own heart shining pay attention to it this is a message 
so the glory of that lord is described in the next three verses so it also gives how to meditate upon that lord verse number 3 page number 234 ऊर्धम प्राणम उन्नयति अपानम प्रत्यगस्यति मध्ये वा मनमासीनम विश्वे देवा उपासते ऊर्धम प्राणम उन्नयति अपानम प्रत्यगस्यति मध्ये वा मनमासीनम विश्वे देवा उपासते यस सो व्हाट डज दिस लॉर्ड डू इन दिस बॉडी इन दिस puramekadasha dwaram so meditation upon the lord how to do it a beautiful technique is given so watch your breath so what is happening to this breath there are two things happening apana and prana urdham pranam unnayati ya that supreme lord remaining in this body what is he doing urdham it pushes the prana up unnayati pushes urdham upwards upward means what what is the reference whenever you say upwards with respect to this it has to be upward isn't it what is the reference point so bhagwan shankaracharya says urdham means hridayat urdham upward with respect to the heart with respect to the heart it is upward so what is that exhalation so when we breathe out what is happening to the prana it is going out so with respect to the heart it is upwards so exhalation so exhalation who is doing it yeah that lord apanam pratyak asyati pratyak inner as i told you inner pratyak means inner pratyak also means down so what are we doing when we are inhaling so with respect to the heart it is coming inside downwards asyati asyati mean kshipati throwing as means to throw that's why astra astra means what that which is thrown the weapon that is thrown is called astra that weapon which is held in the hand and fought that is called a shastra <laughs> astra and shastra don't think both are same there's a difference <laughs> that which you throw arrow is astra gada is shastra anyway coming back <laughs> apanam pratyagasyati that which that lord who makes you so the inhalation called inhalation is called apana exhalation is called prana you see the term is pranam apana that which goes within is called apana that which goes out is called prana prana apana inhalation exhalation Now see, this is one sample given. Okay, how to meditate? So, what do you do when you meditate? Sit in silence. Close your eyes. Observe what is happening in your body. That is the first step. So, in this case, observe your breath. It's going out, coming in, going out, coming in. So, what is the first step? the first step is just paying attention <laughs> okay just pay attention to your breathing okay so as you are paying attention you will find that the mind has to withdraw from the 
world all the extroverted activities it has to be draw otherwise you can't pay attention that is the first step easiest step very easy it is it there is a movement there is a physical action it is a gross action paying attention to anything gross is very easy just pay attention to your breath as you are just paying attention paying attention paying attention paying attention what happens to the mind peace book now what you have to do naturally the question come what am i doing wasting time <laughs> i could have done something better don't encourage that thought ask this question everything is happening so perfectly i am alive how am i alive i am alive because so many things are happening so perfectly in the body heart is beating kidneys functioning liver is functioning blood circulation is happening you are paying attention to all the you know all the sensations in the body heartbeat there is a sensation pay attention pay attention pay attention everything is functioning well am i responsible ask this question <laughs> am i doing it consciously beating the heart <laughs> i am not doing anything i am a nobody i am nothing puncture the ego first step will the intellect object no intellect say yeah really i don't do anything is very convincing you see first step paying attention second step puncturing the ego what is your role in keeping yourself alive nothing i am a nobody yes the auspicious beginning of learning the auspicious beginning of meditation happens in that fertile ground of egolessness of humility that's the first step if you want to know anything worth first become egoless humble so this meditation should make you humble i am a nobody so everything is perfectly happening in this body and i have no role to play i say i am a great man a self made man fool you are <laughs> all your achievements can it be there without this heart functioning without this digestion happening blood circulation happening everything is happening therefore you could do something puncture the ego puncture it become a nobody in your own eyes no another thought flow you take up line of thinking if everything is functioning so well there has to be an intelligent principle that is the law of this world nothing happens as an accident there has to be some intelligent principle if there is perfect functioning of anything correct as an inference the moment you are careless things go wrong that is the nature of this world 
so if there is something perfectly happening there was never a time when the heart did not beat there was never a time when the breathing stopped even when i was asleep breathing was continuing so i cannot say that i am consciously breathing therefore i am alive <laughs> even when i am not there i am breathing what a mechanism so there has to be an intelligent principle there is a conscious sentient entity consciously keeping me alive with all alertness with all vigilance with all care with all love there is some entity which is keeping me alive who is he see the next line madhye vamanam asinam there is a law Where is he? Asinam. He is seated. Where? Madhye. Madhye means what? Hridaya Pundarika Akashe. In the heart space. Hridaya Pundarika. Pundarika means lotus. In the lotus heart. Why is it lotus? Lotus means perfection. He is seated in that perfect heart. In that space. and that is why you have all these you know gods and goddesses standing or sitting on lotus <laughs> they are all the concepts coming from upanishads only lotus means perfection god is perfect what is the perfection of lotus in the dirty water it brings out fragrance from the dirty water it brings out honey from the dirty water it brings out beauty that is perfection no complaining no grumbling in the most unconducive environment here is a flower which is bringing out everything perfect beautiful fragrant auspicious and also the lotus always opens to the light close to darkness that is also perfection ever open to everything good and auspicious in the world ever close to everything bad in auspicious when the light comes it is open when the darkness comes it is closed that's how our mind also should be there are good things in this world blossom yourself when bad things close yourself you see that is the beauty of lotus so every divinity is connected with lotus okay so that lord is seated in the heart and is patiently doing you see when that heart is beating what do you see in that heart beat what do you see don't say ah, it is the nature of heart to beat only just like it is the nature of fire to show heat just like it is the nature of the sugar to be in the same way it is the nature gone you are why you unnecessarily bring god into picture that is the nature just like the water is flowing from higher to the lower it's his nature why are you bringing god gone you are <laughs> you have killed yourself there was such a great possibility to develop devotion for god you see they when atheist analyzes life and a way the devotee analyzes life in both of them heart is functioning the one brushes it aside as a mere happening in the nature another one sees is an opportunity to become humble to become grateful oh lord even when i am not paying attention to you you are paying attention to me oh lord even when i am busy with the world you are there constantly like a mother paying attention to me total attention to me lovingly taking care of me keeping me alive even when i am asleep you are constantly working this we have to see oh lord how what a wicked crooked fellow i am stone hearted fellow i am here is you who is day and night working to keep me alive and here am i 
all the time ignoring you busy with all silly silly things unimportant things filthy things of the world not even saying a thanks to you not even grateful to you oh lord such a stone hearted crooked fellow i am how can i ever ask for liberation <laughs> this is the way you have to meditate you see i am sorry oh lord i have no love for you what question i have bhagwan how can i love you <laughs> is it a question to be asked here is there somebody who is loving you unconditionally here is there someone who is paying attention to you 24 by 7 here is someone who is concerned about you keeping you alive giving you more and more opportunities to evolve and become one with him such a lord is working day and night and i am not paying attention You see how cruel we are, yes or no? <laughs> we are very, very cruel. And the price we pay for this ingratitude, the price we pay for this cruelty is bondage. Puna rabi jananam, puna rabi maranam. It's a price. It's a heavy price. Remember. all our suffering is because we are born and we are born because we are doing something greatly sinful it's a great sin that somebody is loving you so much doing everything for you ever with you paying attention and you are ignoring <laughs> don't search for ravana and hiranyakashipu outside i am the one I am the one, so cruel, heartless, ungrateful. See, that is the way this verse has to be read. Madhye vamanam asinam, urdham prana manna yati, abhanam pratyakasyati. Here is a Lord who is keeping everything. There are infinite number of things happening in the body, and here is a Lord who says, "You don't worry about anything. I will look after everything. Everything I will look after. You don't worry. Your job, just remember me at least <laughs> once in a while. Say thank you. We say, 'Eh, which God? I don't believe. <laughs> This is our attitude. What a sin! What a sin!" so here when it is said urdham prana munne te apan that is just one na everything else you have to see liver is functioning kidney is functioning blood circulation is happening digestion is happening excretion is happening body is nourished inside he is taking care outside he is preparing food also for you <laughs> that also it is not mine he is taking care so beautifully like a father and mother never be an atheist as an absolutely wrong way of thinking ungrateful way mathe vamanam asina vamanam what is the meaning sambhajaniyam bhagwan shankara acharya says what is vamanam not just bhajaniyam samyak bhajaniyam <laughs> bhajaniyam means worshipful Absolutely worshipful, sambhajaniyam. Madhi asinam is there in the heart. Hmm. Who is he worshipful? Vishve Deva Upasate. All the devatas are worshiping him. What do you mean, devatas? Now, don't think of some devata. भगवान शंकर आचार्य से विश्व मीन सर्वे विश्व मीन सर्वे ऑल द देवतास वर्ड इज देवतास सो देवाह मीन्स चक्षुरादय प्राणा ऑल दीज इंद्रिया द सेंस ऑर्गेन्स आर कॉल देवतास एंड द प्राणा ऑल्सो दे आर ऑल द देवतास वे आर दे कॉल देवतास देव मीन्स दिव दिव मीन्स टू इल्यू मीन 
anything which illumines something to you that's called a deva the eyes illumine form and color the ears illumine sound so that which illumines gives knowledge that's called as devatas so the indriyas the mind the pranas they are all devatas and what are these devatas doing they are just worshiping that lord seated in the heart we are not worshiping but they are worshiping hmm? how are they worshiping so beautiful thing is said here virupaadi vijnanam balim upaharantah visha iva rajanam upasate beautiful example you see in the olden days you know the kings when they rule the kingdom all the business people vaishyas what do they do whenever they go to some country etc they bring upahar gift to the king the best thing whatever they have they give it for the king and they offer it at his feet yes or no kings you will find that why is it so that they will get some you know so it is easy for them to do business in that kingdom the king can do so many things for the business people he can evade tax for them give some land help him you know construct his whatever business etc so they for all these business people they come and keep on giving offerings to the king in the same way these eyes what are they doing they bring the form and the color and offer it to whom to the lord who is seated the eyes are bringing upahara of color and form the ears are bringing what so everybody in total obedience in total reverence prana what is prana doing prana apana vyana udana samana all the functions happening in the body efficiently they are doing it why here is a lord king you have to strictly obey him we should never disobey him they have lot of reverence and if you see the functioning of the body they are perfect most efficient till the body dies as much as they have energy they are doing it to keep the body healthy yes or no you see then i say ah today is a sunday let me take rest <laughs> no <laughs> that is the way the bodily functions are happening so vishve deva upasa they are worshiping that lord who is seated in the heart hmm. you see with this feeling you must sit for meditation understood many times you swami ji i also sit i observe breath nothing happen very boring swami ji <laughs> it will be boring with this feeling you have to do it you know the heart is filled with love filled with gratitude humility oh lord i am a nobody you are doing so much and i am doing nothing still you love me still you are keeping me alive i am so ungrateful and still you are keeping me alive this is called as karuna sagar ocean of compassion and this way you must feel your heart then what will become your heart will become avakra chetas <laughs> pure heart and that pure heart you clearly feel intuitively experience what that presence of consciousness the only perfect instrument necessary is a pure heart you clearly experience a different entity in this body supporting this body different from the body ruling the body keeping the body alive that consciousness your heart must corporate if you directly enter into witnessing and all that nothing will happen before witnessing you have to prepare the mind and preparation of the mind is through such noble emotions this way you have to meditate okay madhye vamanam asinam vishve deva upasate all these devatas are worshiping that lord 
why they worship there is another reason see the next verse page number 235 asya visram samanasya शरीरस्थस्य देहिनः देहात् विमुच्यमानस्य किमत्र परिशिष्यते एतत् वैतत् अस्य विस्रम समानस्य शरीरस्थस्य देहिनः देहात् विमुच्यमानस्य किमत्र परिशिष्यते एतत् वैतत् एतत् वैतत् दिस इंडीड इज दैट नचिकेता यू हैव बीन आस्किंग समथिंग इज इन इट या दिस इज द वन इट इज देयर नचिकेतास क्वेश्चन वाज दिस ओ लॉर्ड is there something in this body which never decays which is beyond karma and karma phala which is unaffected by the past present and future which is different from the body is there something which is beyond the three you know bodies sukshma sula karana sharira is there something etat vaita this is that nachiketa etat this is tat that that means which you asked so why is this lord so important in this body the moment this lord exit this body the body is gone <laughs> that is a proof and that is why all the devatas are worshiping this entity vishve deva upasate why because those devatas have existence only till this lord is residing this body the moment the lord exit the body devatas also gone so they worship our existence is because of his existence so what he said here asya visram samanasya sharirasthasya dehinah this lord this pure consciousness this supreme self sharirastha when he is seated in the body stha means to get seated stha where is he seated sharira stha seated in the body and now what is his role dehinah he is a dehi the possessor of the body so when consciousness possesses this body remains in this body identifies with this body so consciousness identified with the body is called jeevatma yes <laughs> so as long as the jeevatma is there in the body that is the meaning sharirasthasya dehinah everything is fine but the moment moment visram samanasya visram samana means detaching loosening separating the moment this jeevatma exits the body vimuchyamanasya vimuchya means muchya freeing when this jeevatma frees himself from this body separates from this body this jeevatma is remember none other than paramatma only what is the relation between jeevatma and paramatma ignorant paramatma is jeevatma <laughs> ignorant paramatma is called jeevatma Paramatma with wrong notion is called Jeevatma. Ignorant means what? Correct? Paramatma with body identification is called Jeevatma. Hmm. Right. Now, Paramatma with wrong notion. Will it will it stop being paramatma <laughs> paramatma with wrong notion will it stop being paramatma no in reality it is paramatma only just because a wrong notion has crept in of course we may use the term jeevatma 
but actually it is still paramatma only that is why in this verse jeevatma is not used paramatma only is used when paramatma exit the body actually what is exiting jeevatma but here the term itself is not used how does it matter whether jeevatma knows himself or not the reality is jeevatma is always paramatma so therefore if you see this verse the moment paramatma exit the body vimuchya manasya visram samanasya when it detaches from the body what happens kematra parishishyate what remains what is there nothing what happens to the body disintegrates becomes one with the five elements nothing remains as long as he is there everything is fine the moment he goes everything is gone so therefore what is the most important thing he the lord mathe vamana masinam so pay attention to him that's the whole idea never ignore him no one person has no 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 i am alive because i am breathing <laughs> fool <laughs> you are not alive because you are breathing he is there that is why you are breathing you see many times you know you don't know which is the cause and which is the effect that is the next verse <laughs> verse number 5 page number 237 न प्राणेन न अपानेन मृत्यु जीवति कश्चन इतरे न तो जीवंती यस्मिन्नेताश्रित न प्राणेनान पानेन मर्त्यो जीवति कश्चन इतरे न तो जीवंती यस्मिन्नेताश्रित न प्राणेन न अपानेन न प्राणेन नापानेन मर्त्यो जीवति कश्चन मर्त्य कश्चन मर्त्य all of us the mortals how are we alive na pranena na apanena it is not that you are alive because you are inhaling and exhaling so these are the you know the statements made by the athis because these things are there i am alive why are you bringing god into picture because these things are happening therefore i am alive you are even necessarily very clear scriptures no you know shruti mata knows what are <laughs> the doubts is this so that statement is there na pranena apanena it is not because the prana apana is there therefore you are alive then itarena tu jeevanti it is because of something else because of which you are alive yasmin etau upasthitau it is because of that that these two are functioning ashrayam what is the ashraya for pana uh, uh, what is that prana and apana ashrayam is this entity because this entity is there breathing is happening don't say because breathing i am alive no as long as this entity is there everything will be there the moment this entity goes nothing will be there there can be so many superficial reasons you will find i am alive because i am breathing i am alive because this is happening i am alive because heart is functioning there are superficial reasons the real reason is he is there therefore everything is happening therefore you are alive therefore why all this discussion pay attention to him anushthanam's explanation this is going on <laughs> what is anushthanam dhyanam what dhyanam savitnyana purvakam dhyanam know the glory of consciousness then pay attention to him with all reverence pay attention to him with all devotion pay attention to him 
with all humility pay attention to him with all gratitude pay attention to him when should you pay attention remember each chapter tasmad sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmarayudhya now samji to pay attention which is better morning or evening are every time <laughs> one hour i will pay attention samji then i am busy with work are bhaiya even when you are working see the instruction tasmad sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara remember me when sarveshu kaleshu yudhya cha and then perform your duties so as you are performing your duty another part of the mind should always be aware of this truth i am doing this because somebody is keeping me alive i am doing this because somebody is keeping me inspired i am doing this because somebody is creating an a conducive environment for me because of which i am able to fulfill my family duties because of which i am able to fulfill my professional duties my prostration unto him you see this is the attitude so when the whole life is a life of worship life of gratitude so whatever karma i do whatever actions i do it should be as a worship unto him you see so the whole life becomes a life of worship sarveshu kaleshu in hinduism we don't believe in sunday church friday mosque i told you <laughs> sarveshu kaleshu the more the better the more the better and if the more and more you are doing it slowly slowly that becomes a habit and anything that which becomes a habit becomes effortless becomes spontaneous becomes natural repeated practice that is called as anushthana the more and more you do the more and more it becomes effortless hmm. the more and more become it effortless even in the trying times it is there what is a trying time prana prayana samaye kafa vata pittehi कंठ अवरोधन विधो स्मरण कुतस्ते भगवान एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ रिमेम्बरिंग यू इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट प्राण प्रयाण समय वेन दैट प्राण इज लिविंग द बॉडी देहाद विमुच्य मानस वेन द प्राण इज लिविंग द बॉडी काफ वात पित्ते ही ड्यू टू काफ वात एंड पित्त काफ फ्लैम vata vind pitta bail kantha avarodhana vidho when the voice get choked when i am helpless miserable full of pain smaranam kudaste how can i remember you but there is a way what is a way repeated practice 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 what is a practice being attention <laughs> that is called as ishwara smaranam bhagavat smaranam being attention is nothing but remembering they are all different different terms what is the same thing you just remember that he is there you remember his presence you recollect his presence pay attention to his presence make it a habit when you make it a habit what happens one part of the mind is dealing with the world another part of the mind is holding on to that permanent so you are ever connected to the permanent remember you need not be disconnected from the permanent to fulfill your responsibilities in the impermanent realm this is a wrong notion we have unless i am disconnected how can i connect no it is possible mind has that ability 
Bhagavan will never ask us to do something which is impossible. Just like one part of the mind is always in touch with the reality that I am a man, I am a human being. Another part of the mind is fulfilling the rest, isn't it? I never forget that I am a man or a woman. I am a human being. I am always knowing it in the same way. God is there. He is the higher self in me. He is the essence in me. I am here to please Him. Let these emotions of gratitude and humility ever be there. This doesn't come with no end in meditation. Again and again, again and again, again and again. This is a price you have to pay. Constant vigilance, alertness. Then what happens? At the time of death, remembrance of God becomes natural, effortless. Of course, while living itself, you start reaping the benefits. It's not that only at the time of death. <laughs> death is the ultimate test. But there are small, small tests, so many tests, you know. What happens is with this practice, you will never feel lonely. Many of them have not come here because Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? <laughs> Samiji, children, grandchildren, when they come, full of joy. When they leave, ah, two days. You see, when you do this sadhana, yogaratova, bhogaratova, sangaratova, sangavihina. Yasya Brahma Niramate Chittam Nandati 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 Va You see, Nandati 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 I am not alone, God is with me. How can I be alone? He is always there. What is the proof? Look, heart is beating. He is there. <laughs> Look, awareness is there, consciousness is there. He is there. What greater proof is needed? You are never alone. You are ever in a blissful, sacred, divine company of the Lord. You see, that is called as Vimukta, liberated even while living. This is liberation. This is freedom. Mastery over the mind. Peaceful mind, obedient mind, obedient sense organs, freedom from all negativities, negative emotions, freedom from loneliness, freedom from stress, worry, anxiety. This is called real freedom, moksha. Okay. Right. Now, the Lord takes up another topic. What is the topic? How did this Paramatma become the Jeevatma? Nice topic. Tomorrow we will see that. <laughs> Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinah Sarve Santu Niramayah Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschit Dukkha Bhagbhavi Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityurma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om